Okay, we have a simple interest rate problem. Okay, Sue so earned $280 at a simple interest rate of 3.5%. Over the same period, John earned $200 at a rate of 5%. If Sue deposited $500 more than John, how much did each deposit? So again, we have a lot of words. We have to change this into numbers, formulas, and then solve. Uh, it's a little overwhelming, but if you take it phrase by phrase and just fill in the pieces, it, it should work out. So let's first uh, recognize this is an interest rate, simple interest rate problem. So over here, we'll just write quickly the formula. Uh, the simple interest earned interest is equal to the principal amount you put in times that rate uh, times each year that you earn interest. Okay, so we'll keep a note of that. Okay, let's start with Sue since she's first in the problem. And her interest is $280. So $280, okay, uh, equals her principal, okay. Uh, again, we know she deposited $500 more than John, but we don't know what that amount is. That's actually what we're looking for, okay. So the principal for Sue is uh, principal Sue, and the rate is 3.5%, so we're going to change that into a decimal, okay, 0.035. And then the time is simply a period, and we'll call that T. So that's Sue's interest earning formula. And let's go to John. Okay, John over here. Okay, he uh, earned two hundred dollars, and his principal is uh, principal John. We'll put principal John. We'll change it in a second. Um, Five percent, and same period of time. So again, let's keep using the information they give us. We have Sue earned, we have John earned the rate. Here's a big point right here. Sue deposited $500 more than John, okay? So therefore, their principles are related to each other. So let's change um, Sue's principal amount, because I like to work with positive numbers, and let's make this amount $280 equals John, because she deposited $500 more, times 0.035t. So here are our two equations we're going to be working with. This is Sue, this is John. And the great news is notice how we have a lot of common variables. And we're simply going to look for how much they deposited. We need to find this principal amount. So let's solve it, OK? Let's uh, first take the first equation and set it in terms of t. So T is equal to $200 divided by PJ times 0 0.05, okay? And then the second equation, we're going to have T is equal to $280 divided by PJ plus 500 times 0 0.035. Okay, and then the nice thing is we can set these equal to each other through substitution. Okay, so we're going to have $200 over 0.05 PJ is equal to $280 over, okay, and I'm going to quickly do this as 0.035 PJ, okay, plus 0.035 times 500, 0.035 times 500 is, oh, nicely, it's 17.5 uh, Okay, I want to double check that. 500 is indeed 17.5 Okay, and lastly, we can um, take this and let's, uh, let's cross multiply. Okay, we have our two equations and let's solve for P. Okay, so cross multiplying this way, 0 0.05 times 280, 0 0.05 times 280 is equal to 14 dollars P. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the J, we'll just call it P for now. Okay, and it is equal to $200 times 0 0.035 is $7 P plus 1750 times 200 is 3500 
Therefore, 7p is equal to 3,500. P is equal to 500. Well, that was a nice answer, $500. Okay, so let's go back to our original question. How much did each deposit? Well, P is equal to $500, okay? And of course, remember, that was PJ. So PJ is, remember, John's principal. So John deposited 500, and Sue deposited 500 plus 500, 1,000, okay? So those are our solutions, 500 and 1,000. And of course, I always like to check my answers, so let's quickly check it and actually see how long their money was deposited. Okay, go back to the original equation, okay? If Sue had $1,000, okay, so it'd be $280, okay, is equal to $1,000 times 0.035t. Using our quick calculator, this is 280 is equal to 0.035 times 1,000 is 35t. So t is equal to 280 divided by 35 is... Eight. So that means eight years. So Sue, that's a nice clean number. Sue had her money in there for eight years. And let's see if John had his money in there for eight years to check our answer. If John had his money in there for eight years, he would have um, $200. And his principal was again $500, right? Uh, times a rate of 0 0.05 times eight years. And so 0 0.05 times 500 is $25 a year times 8 times 8 is equal to 200 and that checks so there's our answer before going to the next video I want to make a quick uh, comparison between simple interest and compound interest um, Hopefully you've seen this before, but maybe not. Maybe you've only seen one or the other. Um, but I wrote a quick comparison. Uh, notice simple interest is 10%, compound interest is 10%. And the best way to explain these concepts is just, let's use an example. Okay, suppose I put $1,000 into an account here that earns simple interest. Simple interest basically says that every year you're going to get interest on your initial amount. It's simple every year so we're going to get hundred dollars hundred dollars hundred dollars hundred dollars okay compound interest though basically says that each year when you're given your interest payment it's going to compound the other interest payments so let's take a look in the first year you get your 10 percent so you have eleven hundred dollars now in this case you're sending the money back to the investor in this case the money actually stays in the account so the second year when it's earning interest it's earning interest on $1,100. So you're actually getting 10% of $1,100, which is $110, which adds up to $121. So this is $1,210. And then, simul then, of course, the next year, you get 10% of $1,210, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, the best way is to just sort of memorize these formulas, and over time, you'll understand where they come from. Uh, you can look on the Internet or several math websites and um, see more details about it. And the final thing to keep in mind is when you do have compounded interest annually, there is something called the rule of 72, which is very helpful in checking your work. And basically it says at a given interest rate, let's say 6% or X, the number of years it would take for your initial investment to double would be 72 divided by that interest rate. So in this case, 6 or 72 divided by X. So if you had a 6% compounding interest rate, it would take about 12 years to double. If your interest rate was 7%, it would take approximately 10 years to double. So in this example, we have a compounding interest question. Joe makes an investment that offers a 6% rate that compounds annually. How many years will it take for his investment to double? And again, remember the formulas that we had, okay? Uh, this is compounding interest. So you have your amount is going to equal your principal times the interest rate, which is one plus, that's the amount that's accumulating, uh, to the number of years, okay? So let's take a look. It's pretty straightforward. Joe makes an, uh, an investment. So we're gonna call the investment P is his investment. Okay, 
And then it offers 6% interest rate. So I is going to equal 0.06 at 6%. And it compounds annually, compounds. And how many years will it take for his investment to double? So the amount, the, no, the amount that's going to exit is going to be two, double this. So it's going to be 2P. Okay. So let's substitute in. We're looking for how many years, which is, of course is N. N is the number of years. So we're going to have 2P equals P times 1 plus 0 0.06 to the N. And we're looking for N. So let's solve. Okay. Divide both sides by P. 2 equals 1.06 to the n. Okay, we're going to have to use logarithms. Um, hopefully, you've learned this. If not, perhaps you can figure it out on your calculator. Um, we'll take the log of both sides. So the log of 2 will equal the log of 1.06 to the n. And the power rule says we can bring the n down in front. So the log of 2 equals n times the log of 1.06 okay and going to our calculator the log of 2 is 0 0.301 301 and and the log of 1.06 1.06 log is 0 0.025 0 0.025 and so n will equal 0.301 11.89 and this of course is years because the investment is compounding annually so we're using years and again so let's go back to our question Joe makes an investment that offers 6% rate compounded annually how many years will it take to double it'll take 11.89 years which of course going back to the rule of 72 72 divided by 6 equals 12 and notice how close our answer is so that is correct